Broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean in Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my ChadDeckard.com podcast show. My shows will cover how online and offline marketing and communications can grow your business, as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, and travel and adventure. Thank you for tuning in to my show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now, let's get down to business. Here's some show news and updates. As you know, my first show that I recorded last week was a pivotal show that I'm going to base the first 10 shows of this year on in regards to 10 ways to make your marketing more effective in tough economic times. In these types of times, businesses need to go back and look at the basics or look at the new innovative ways in order to get their business out there and maintain their competition. Otherwise, they'll be left behind. So the 10 innovative ways that we went over last week where number one, find your ideal prospect, which is exactly the subject matter that we're going to cover here today. Number two was what makes your business different than your competition. Number three is develop a core message that addresses your ideal prospect's need. Number four is use the ADA, A-I-D-A formula in your sales letters and direct response material. Number five is your total internet presence. Number six is referral marketing. And number seven is connect with the media. Number eight is create a sales system. And number nine, schedule your marketing. And number 10 is set the stage so your employees know what is happening and why. So those are the 10 things that uh, uh, you need to uh, be more effective in in uh, tough economic times. So let's go ahead and get started here today with finding your ideal prospect. So wouldn't it be good to know who your ideal prospects are before sending out emails, newsletters, tweets, Facebook, fan page invites, or webinar invitations? Many of us naturally assume that everyone wants to hear what we have to say and desperately wants to purchase the service or product we're selling. Found that to be true lately? Hmm. Well, finding your audience, to find your audience, the web landscape is full of locations that attract all sorts of prospects. Some flock to iTunes and YouTube, whereas others congregate at blogs and community websites. Each business owner's challenge is to figure out where his or her ideal prospects gather. Not every person is willing to purchase our products. There, I've said it. Even though consumers are turning to the web in droves to make purchases, Statistics show that only about 3% of the people who initially visit a website are ready to purchase. That means the other 97% are just window shopping, kicking the tires, gathering information, or they're just plain lost. In simple terms, that means for every 1,000 web visitors, only 30 are ready to buy now. One might say, wow, that's fantastic. 30 new customers per hour or per month, but not so fast. Let's factor in the bounce rate, the percentage of visitors who leave a website within five seconds of arriving. It is typical for a site's bounce rate to be between 50 and 60 percent. So let's subtract 550 visitors from the 1,000 and now the number of visitors ready to buy quickly drops from 30 to 13. Now you need to profile your ideal prospects. And the best way to know your ideal prospects is to identify their habits, their mannerisms, their wants, needs, and desires. Don't define the ideal prospect as a male or female living in the continental United States who likes to fish. That's way too general. The first characteristic, male or female, includes everyone alive. Try to come up with a more specific picture of your ideal prospect. Suppose you are in a seminar business and a small business is in your niche. Your ideal prospect could be described as hmm, maybe one, a self-starter, two, maybe a pioneer, or maybe even a person with high energy or likes to be his or her own boss, is very strong-willed, a workaholic, potentially very competitive, and someone who knows that he or she can do just about or cannot do just about anything or everything. 
Those characteristics will lead you in certain directions on the web and steer you away from others. For instance, small business entrepreneurs are less likely to congregate on MySpace than they are to assemble on LinkedIn. A professional network of more than 55 million business people from 200 countries, it's a great place to establish business relationships. People who know they cannot handle every obstacle they encounter are more likely to frequent bookstores, internet knowledge bases, and other educational opportunities such as seminars. Businesses typically have several prospect types. Make sure to isolate each type within its own characteristics and wants, needs, and desires. Being too broad attracts a, gen a general audience, whereas a company's products and services likely don't appeal to a mass group of people. Once your ideal prospect is profiled, you'll need to fer you know, ferret out his or her favorite places to congregate on the web. People tend to congregate in certain spots online. Financial people like reading blogs about making money and investing in other people's money. Fly fishing enthusiasts hang out at fly fishing forums where they can lie to one another about the latest big one that they got or the one that actually got away. <laughs> a company's ideal prospects have plenty of places online where they might gather. Now it's your job to find out where your prospects congregate and develop strategies to gain visibility in those venues. Consider various meeting points. Let's take a, a crack at chopping the web up into meeting points. There are forums, chat rooms, community download sites, social networking sites, traditional websites, and blogs. Your ideal prospects may subscribe to newsletters, read articles, or get targeted press releases. Don't forget about their favorite search engines such as Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Surely the web could be separated into more chunks, but this is a good starting point. Suppose you run a marketing firm with offerings that include on-the-ground marketing tactics such as direct mail, or perhaps you specialize in web marketing solutions with mostly electronic touches. Now let's do some digging. How could you easily tell if your ideal prospects visit communities such as Dig, Sven, StumbleUpon, or Delicious to do some searching? If you go to Dig and search the term marketing, you'll find more than a million results and more are coming on each day. Internet marketing brings up only 120,000 or so posts marketing then is more likely more popular than internet marketing so the analysis may be showing you that fewer people are submitting articles on internet marketing that means there is room for you you can start submitting articles and attracting a following of readers just by pursuing the menu on dig you can see that it has posts about technology world and business science gaming lifestyle entertainment, sports, and offbeat items. How does Sven compare? Its website tagline reads, Internet Marketing News and Discussion Forums. Bingo! That may be just the place to get in front of your ideal prospects. Searching for marketing articles brings up over 950 posts. Internet marketing gets you more than 1,300 posts. You should develop a strategy to be seen in both of these venues. Those two spots are where your people gather. To uncover, uncover whether your prospects read or contribute to certain forums, all you need to do is spend a little time reading the discussion threads. Are they talking about what relates to your business? Are there problems to be solved? Can discussions be added to begin establishing relationships? Marketing dollars are not spent wisely when, their ideal, when your ideal prospects' whereabouts are unknown. Where you put your money is definitely a great consideration of how your things are going to turn out. And here's a story that I'd like to illustrate that point. A summer camp, or let's call it Camp Fun in the Sun, wanted to determine the best place to spend its marketing dollars. It had spent about $9,000 a season on advertising via local radio spots and yellow page ads. As the new summer got underway, the camp asked each family and organization how they found out about Camp Fun in the Sun. Half had found the camp's website, and the balance had attended the camp as a team, had sent their kids to the camp in the past, or had known someone who had. None of them had their fingers doing the walking or had heard the local radio spots, and so $9,000 had been dumped down a dark rat hole. 
Needless to say, the camp stopped the Yellow Page ads and local radio spots and launched a campaign both to reach past guests and campers and to strengthen its web presence. So that gives you a, a very good idea about how you need to consider uh, where your ideal prospect or client is hanging out online and get to that what I would also call watering hole and make yourself known. Do whatever it takes. Find out whether you need to buy display ads. Find out whether or not uh, you can contribute uh, by pr providing information or articles or some type of content that gets them to uh, respect and recognize your authority and what it is that you know. Well, if you like my show, please consider subscribing to it, which you can do by visiting my website, chaddecker.com. Or if you are an iTunes or Smart Stitcher listener, uh, take it with you wherever you may go on your mobile device. I invite you to give the rest of the listeners and myself all the feedback that you can contribute and support because you are what makes this show a success. Please click your share and like button for this audio or video version of this show on your social networks like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and your blog. I really appreciate you doing so. Well, that's about it for this show. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. This is Chad Deckard signing off. Goodbye for now.